Hey friends, uh, today I wanted to go over some more advanced side chaining techniques as well as some uh, just standard compressor techniques that, that might not be uh, immediately apparent about Ableton's compressor. Um, let's go ahead and listen to what I have here. This is a, a live jam that my band did in my living room and we were limited to only 10 tracks. So we had to get kind of creative with how we were going to mic things using 10 tracks to our, our, our greatest advantage. So what we did was we have, as you can see, uh, this is the drum set track. This is just a, a kick drum and an overhead, and this is what it sounds like. Now, obviously, I've done some processing to it. You can hear a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, um, of this Oxford Envolution, which is giving it just a little bit more punch. Um, on the overhead track, I have a little bit of saturation EQ and a parallel compressor. So that's what that sounds like. And then with the bass, um, our bass player Rob has a, a, a signature sound, and it's kind of created by two tracks. We have a clean and a dirty bass. Sounds like this. Okay, and then we have... I put all the synthesizers in one singular bus. This was just like a synth jam. So this is what this sounds like. kind of building up into a big part. Now listen to this right here. Okay, so this is this is a really busy part. Um and you know, that happens sometimes, especially in live improvisation jams, you get you get really busy condensed parts. And so when I listen to this, the problem that I hear is the snare drum is getting completely buried. It's hard to hear. Um, there's a lot of treble information coming from the synths. Okay, so let's listen to this again. And listen, listen to how the snare is buried, okay? Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. So what I did is I created this compressor, this sidechain compressor in the synth bus, because this is where all the other treble information is living. You can hear there's a pad in the background. And there's mid-range being taken up. I mean, that, that's where the snare drum lives. So, so in the interest of that, I've created this special compressor to duck the synth channels when the snare drum hits. So listen to the difference that this makes, okay? This is without it. This is with it. Instantly you can hear that snare drum coming through, the front end tapping of it. Without it. That buried snare drum is with it. So let's talk about how this is made because there's a lot of steps to make this work. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to delete this compressor, okay? I'm going to grab a new compressor from my audio effects. I'm going to drop it into this synth bus. And the way that I did this, this is Ableton 10. I just shift clicked and selected all three tracks and selected group tracks. But I don't need to do that. I already did. Um, and these are these three tracks. There's a, a Novation Peak a bunch of other synths and a tape deck that Sam's playing and Billy's playing um, his synthesizer. And so I've got all these bust up, and so they sound like this. Okay, so in order to make the compressor listen to the snare drum, the snare drum is on an overhead track. There's no actual snare drum track, okay? So I need to go in here and I need to find... I need to try to train the compressor to listen for just when the snare drum hits. So there's a lot that goes on here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to turn on my side chain, obviously, and pick the overhead track, because that's where the snare lives, okay? A uh, little known fact of the compressor is that you can hit this little listen button, okay? And then instead of listening to the signal coming through the compressor, which is this bus, I can instead listen to the side chain. So I turn this on now here. Now I hear the overhead track, okay. So when I'm thinking about isolating the snare drum, I can look at the signal coming in and I can see that the snare drum and the cymbals and the kick drum and everything are, they're kind of hitting the same level. Look at this. I can see the snare drum peak, 
but it's not going to be easy to separate that. So what? first of all, what I need to, to think about is I'm listening to the overhead track post effects, okay? So there's there's saturation, so that's obviously going to bring the uh, RMS level and the peak level together closer. It's going to compress it. The EQ is going to do its job of kind of getting the all the peaks of the, the signal to kind of be balanced. I balanced with some EQ. And then obviously this rock parallel room compressor. I mean, all three of these acting together are going to really just compress that signal into making all the, making it nice and, 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 uh, and level. So, so that sounds pleasing to my ear, but that doesn't really help me here with my, with my side chain. So the next thing I need to do is go to audio from, and now I need to choose pre effects instead of post effects. So now let's look at the signal coming in. And there you, you see a nice, it's getting better. Okay, you can see more of a snare drum peak it, ha it happens up here. Okay, but that's still not enough. The next thing that I need to do is I need to try to f try to hone in on the signal even more by turning on this sidechain EQ. So what this does is it trains the EQ to listen to only where you want it to, like what uh, in, in terms of frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the bandpass setting, this setting right here, and we're going to turn the Q up a little bit so we can really focus in on a very specific frequency range, okay? So let's listen to it now. Man, we're really getting close there. You can see that the snare drum uh, peak is getting closer, but the snare drum, what I want to find is the body of the snare drum. What's the, where's the body area? So I'm going to guess it's a little bit higher than 200 hertz. Now, if you look at that around, around 250, it seems like the snare drum has the, the greatest peak uh, volume. So let's look at that. Now we've really separated that snare drum. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is it's, the compressor still isn't gonna react as fast as it could if the attack was down, okay? So what that means is that it's listening for that attack and, and it's going to be able to, to behave in a faster manner. So watch what happens to the peak volume now when I turn the attack down. And the next thing I need to also do is turn the compression ratio up, okay? Because what I'm concerned with is capturing the front end of that, that snare drum, the transient, right? So watch, watch now what, what's going on. So I pulled the threshold down so that the compressor is now going to duck when that snare drum hits. And if I want to get that even more accented, I can turn up the Q, okay? Because what the Q is doing is it's making the bandpass filter more and more narrow. And I can still tweak this frequency to really find it. There it is. Look at that. Now, I know that's peaking, okay? It's kind of peaking in the ear too, but what that's doing is it's really finding that one resonant frequency that's going to make that snare drum stick out. So we have to work with the, the threshold and the attack in order to get that just right. Now we can see that gain reduction hit every time the snare drum hits. We can see that gain reduction, okay? That's what we want. That's what we're looking for, all right? So let's go ahead and listen to the difference that this compressor is making. See, I'm gonna, I need to turn off my listen, and now we're just going to listen to the synths. So you can see them, you can hear them ducking every time there's a snare drum hit. So let's listen to it in the mix, because that's what really matters. I mean, listening to this effect with everything else is going to th be the thing that reveals what's happening. So let's listen. Great. So you can really hear that snare drum start to come out. Now let's A-B that. Buried snare. Now the compressor snare. Now, obviously that's a lot. You can hear the whole synth track. Now it's ducking. It's ducking away from the snare drum. So the first thing I want to think about with that is is threshold. You know, is, is this happening too much, you know? And the reason my ratio is high is because I really do want those those synths to be ducked when the snare drum hits. Okay, so now that it's now that that's happening, we can mess a little bit with the with the the release. Okay, the longer the release time, the more it's going to sound ducking. So listen to this. But the thing is, is that you know a, a long release time like that might sound a bit more transparent, quote unquote. But you're, what we're trying to get is the very front end, the snap of that snare drum. Okay, so I'm going to actually take the release down a little bit. So this is. This compressor is behaving very quickly.
Okay, so you could maybe consider that a uh, a, a finished sidechain EQ'd compressor right here, but we're going to take it even a step further, okay? What I want you to do is click on this middle Show Transfer Curve button, and what this does is it reveals a couple of other options. One of them that I want to look at is Look Ahead Time. So what this is going to do is it's going to delay the entire your listening experience by however many milliseconds you choose so that the compressor can actually see what's going to happen before it happens. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, what I really want out of this snare drum is the treble. I'm looking for that snap of the snare drum, okay? And the only way that I'm really going to be able to get that to come through is by increasing the look ahead time, okay? I've also done, I also like to do this with gates. If you use gate in Ableton, it's the same thing. You really want to give it some look ahead time. So I'm going to choose 10 milliseconds, okay? This is giving it 10 extra milliseconds to look at the signal that's coming in before the snare drum co comes in. So let's listen to some good hits here and see what the difference that that makes, okay? It's going to be subtle. When I'm doing these, these kinds of mixing things, you really need to listen closely, use headphones, use high quality monitors, just listen to this, okay? Now, to me, that sounds beautiful. What you can hear is, is on those more uh, uh, concise, uh, discrete drum hits, you can really now hear the snare drum's treble coming through, okay? We're going to listen to that same part with zero milliseconds. Listen. Now, that's nice. I have a nice... I can hear the low end of the snare drum, the punch of the snare drum still coming through. But if I really want to get that snap, I have to delay the, 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 the entire process just a little bit. And that's by using the slick head time. So listen now. Sounds quality. Now, this is a, I have it on a, a pretty extreme setting. I would probably back it off just a little bit. And once again, let's A, B it. You can hear it coming in and out of the mix. Some of the snare drum hits, some of them don't. Some of, sorry, some of the snare drum hits work and some of them don't. So let's turn on this compressor and listen now. All the snare drum hits will work. Okay, so that's the first thing. Still, this part is really busy, right? There's still a lot of busy things going on. And in order to extract the snare drum hit even more, I've created a compressor that's on a expander mode right before a snare room reverb, okay? Let's go ahead and, and, and listen to the difference that now this makes. This is yet another way to extract... Oh, I forgot to reduce the width. This is a, yet another way to extract the snare drum and get it to be get it to have more clarity. Let's listen to this now. I'm going to turn this on. Now, if you can't hear the difference there, uh, I'm going to go in here and really show you what's happening, okay? Let's listen to this compressor, okay? So what this is doing is adding a little bit of dimension to the snare drum. It's giving it um, some area in the sides because as you can see at this point, we just have an overhead track and a kick drum pan directly down the center. Now, this is usually where I'll add any width at all to the to the snare to the to the the drum set is in snare reverb because it um, it just gives it more space to occupy. And uh, so what I've done is I've created this very very stereo sounding reverb. Okay, it's very wide, okay? Now, in, in this case, um, I can mess with the width to, to you know, to, to get the different uh, wideness that I want. But what I want to do is I'm going to have it just, just at 100, okay? And, and let's look at what the compressor is doing, all right? An expander in a compressor is different than a normal compressor because what, what is it doing? It's actually, whenever the, the threshold is hit, it, it will, instead of turning down the signal, it will turn the signal up. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got, you can see the gain reduction, GR, right here. You can see it actually every single time it's peaking, it's going up. So why would I be interested in setting that before my snare room reverb? Well, because I've trained the, the sidechain compressor yet again to listen to the incoming signal in the area that the snare drum hits are happening and boost the, uh, the output gain 
um, in order to hear the snare drum and extract that snare drum signal better so that it'll trigger this uh, room reverb, all right? Let's listen to the difference before and after. I'm just going to listen to the drums, okay? So we have this snare room reverb, reverb running. We can hear that nice reverb. It's adding dimension. Okay. I'm going to turn this compressor off. Now the reverb is still there, but it's not happening in a concise way whenever the, the snare drum hits. Let's turn it on and off. Right? Off. On. So let's, let's go over how we do this. So I'm going to delete this compressor. I'm going to add the compressor onto this return track, okay? I'm gonna open sidechain. I need to pick overhead because that's where my snare drum's living. And remember, we're gonna go pre-effects because we really wanna isolate those hits, okay? I'm turning on EQ. I'm going to turn on my bandpass mode so I can really get that snare drum. And so in order to listen to this compressor, I need to turn these guys off just for a second. And we're gonna just listen to the input signal, okay? So, I'm going to increase my Q so I can really just dial in finding where that snare drum uh, frequency is, okay? And keep messing with that Q till I get it just right. Okay, so as you can see, you can see it triggering that. Now, in order to get more signal going through, I'm going to increase my ratio, turn down my attack time, and I'm even going to go so far as to increase the look ahead time so we can really just get on top of that snare hit, all right? So let's watch this now. Now you can see the gain reduction going down. That's not what we want. What we want is to expand it. We want it to go up, okay? So now... In order to get more gain going out of the expander, we actually have to turn the ratio up. You can see the curve increasing. So whenever that signal hits this threshold, we get more snare drum. Another thing we can do is we can uh, decrease the knee a little bit and get more of a concise expansion. So now we can really see that gain being increased on the snare drum, all right? So let's turn back, let's turn the room reverb back on in the utility, and our end result is. Sorry, our end, <laughs> I left the uh, headphones on. Our end result is this. Now, without the compressor, the reverb is there, but it's not doing the job I need it to do. I need it to accent the snare drum. Okay, so now with all these changes, what I'm gonna do is a classic move of mine. I'm gonna hit key, I'm gonna map the Q key to the on-off switch of this compressor, and I'm gonna map that same key to the on-off of this compressor in the synth bus, so we can A, B the, the difference that these sidechain compressors are making. Okay, so here's without them. Snare drum is buried, can barely hear it. I'm gonna hit Q. There's that snare drum, bright and present. Without it. And with it. Okay, so that's just little tiny tricks you can use on the compressor to get a little bit more action out of it. Um, also, if you find that you are not getting the kind of attack that you're looking for, that really sharp front end, just mess around with the look ahead time and also mess around with the knee. These are really useful features. Um, so I hope this uh, video was useful for you. Um, if you like it, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. See you next time.